I love the Mac operating system. I have done for the last 10 years, but there are some things that I don't like. Scroll bars disappearing, getting lost in Finder, files opening in the wrong app. These are all little annoyances that add up over time. Thankfully, they're all easy to fix if you know what you're doing and you will know what you're doing by the end of this video as I share 10 such annoyances with you. Okay, let's get into it. The Finder on the Mac is good, but the default views aren't particularly helpful. Let's quickly go through everything that I think you should change. Open a Finder window and choose Preferences. Remember that you can do this by going to the menu bar at the top of the screen or by pressing Command and the comma button. In the General tab, the first section gives you options for what you'd like to appear on your desktop. I personally prefer a clean desktop, so I disable all of these. If you need to see a hard drive, for example, you'd still be able to see it on the left-hand side of your Finder window. Disabling this option just removes it from your desktop view. Underneath this, there's an option called New Finder Window Show. This basically means what you would like to see by default every time that you open a new Finder window. The default is Recent, and while I understand why this is, I can honestly tell you that I've never used this feature and find it really annoying. Personally, I set mine to my Work in Progress folder because that's usually where I want to go every time that I open a Finder window. And Tags. Personally, I don't use tags at all, so I have all of this disabled. As for the sidebar, I tend to disable most things, but I leave things like AirDrop and Downloads enabled, as well as my iCloud folders. Be selective here, and if there's anything in here that you don't think you're using very frequently, disable it, because it will make your Finder experience much more streamlined. Under Advanced, make sure that you enable Show All File Name Extensions. One of the most annoying things about Finder on the Mac is that it's really difficult to tell what a file is just by looking at it. For example, if I design a thumbnail in Photoshop, the file shows in my Finder and it looks like a JPEG. It's only when I double click on it and it opens in Photoshop that I realize it's actually the PSD file. With this enabled, I can see exactly what the file is before I open it. You can choose to disable some warnings here. The remove items from iCloud Drive warning is particularly annoying, so I tend to disable that one. You might also decide that you don't want a warning every time that you empty the trash. And finally, at the bottom of this page, there is the when performing a search option. I would choose between either search this Mac or search within the current folder, depending on how you use your computer. If you're someone who has files all over the place, you probably want to leave it as search this Mac. If you tend to have all your files in one or a couple of folders, but they're not very organized, you might want to choose search within the current folder instead. Say what you will about scroll bars. I think they're extremely useful, especially if you're working through large documents. An annoying feature of the Mac is that it thinks it knows better than you do about when to allow scroll bars and when to hide them. I prefer to make that decision myself and have them always enabled. To do this, open settings and choose appearance. In the show scroll bars section, choose always. From this point on, scroll bars will always be visible on all of the windows that you have open and your Mac will stop trying to make the decision for you. Yes, if you click on the green button in the traffic lights of a window, you have the option of making the window full screen or tiling it to the left or right. But honestly, in 2023, almost 2024, window management on Mac OS is still awful. So one of the things I would recommend is installing a third party window management app. This is the only recommendation in this video where I'm gonna suggest that you buy an app, by the way. Thankfully, it is a very low cost app and one that I've been using for years. I don't receive any kind of compensation for recommending it. The app is called Moom. Once installed, you'll see that you can hover your cursor over the green traffic light button and you'll have way more options for managing your windows. The way that I have it set up on my Mac is that I can position windows on the left, right, top or bottom of the screen, which works really well on my LG dual up display but I can also split the display into thirds or quarters or pretty much any kind of grid system that I like. Give Moom a try, especially if you use your Mac with external displays, it is an absolute game changer. This video is all about the things in Mac OS that I don't like and something else that I don't like is using public Wi-Fi, like the kind that you get in airports, coffee shops and hotels without using a VPN. And that's because using public Wi-Fi without a VPN is like leaving your phone on a table while you step away it's risky. Private internet access encrypts your internet connection, effectively hiding your IP address. It's an essential tool that I use on my iPhone, iPad and MacBook, providing peace of mind when I'm out and about. But why do I recommend private internet access so often? Apart from their robust security, they have a strict no-log policy proven in court, ensuring your browsing stays private. 
For the streamers among us, PIA is amazing, offering the ability to change your IP to 91 different countries and all 50 US states, helping you get around those pesky geographical content blocks. One subscription covers your entire tech arsenal, no matter how many devices you have. And it's not just for Apple products. PIA is compatible with Windows, Mac OS, Android, Linux, and more. Getting started with private internet access is super easy and there's no risk involved. They offer a 30-day money-back guarantee and round-the-clock customer support. Sign up through the link in the description of this video to get PIA's Cyber Monday exclusive deal of an 83% discount plus four extra months free. That's top-notch security for just a couple of dollars a month. It can be really annoying when you're viewing a file in Finder and you want to know where you are on your Mac. Your Mac doesn't make this particularly easy by default, but there are a couple of options that you can enable to help here. When you have a Finder window open, click on View in the menu bar at the top of the screen, and I would personally have all three of these options enabled. Show Toolbar, Show Path Bar, and Show Status Bar. The Status Bar is probably the least useful out of all the options here, but it is still worth having enabled. It essentially shows you things like the number of items that you have in that particular folder, and the amount of space that you have available on your local drive or your iCloud drive if you're viewing an iCloud folder. The path bar is much more useful as it shows you the trail for the folder that you're currently in, allowing you to click back through to the different folders if you need to. The toolbar is probably something that you already have as it's the toolbar that sits at the top of your finder window. You probably haven't customized your toolbar, but you can do that in the next tip. The toolbar in Finder can be a bit bloated, especially by default, or if you've added third-party apps that add buttons here. It's worth customizing this, and it's really easy to do. With a window open, right-click in the toolbar and choose Customize Toolbar. At the bottom of this window is a section called Show. By default, this will show only the icon for everything in the toolbar. This is fine if you've used the toolbar long enough to know what everything is, but I would recommend at least exploring the option of showing both the icon and the text. It doesn't look quite as neat, but if you happen to forget what the different buttons in the toolbar mean, this at least fixes that problem. You can then simply drag items onto and off of the toolbar as needed. For example, one of the most useful features of the Mac ecosystem, in my opinion, is AirDrop, and this isn't included in the toolbar by default, so I would absolutely drag that on. This way, with a file selected, you just click the AirDrop button and it begins the AirDrop process. I would also consider including things like the new folder button and the delete button, but play around with this, see what you find useful here. Touch ID is a really useful feature on your Mac and so is iCloud Keychain for saving your passwords. There is a function where you can use Touch ID to input passwords automatically in Safari. If you're using a shared computer or a laptop that you take out often, this is probably a good idea, but if you're using this on a home computer, constantly having to use Touch ID to input your password can be a bit annoying. You can disable this if you want to. To disable this feature, open System Settings and choose Touch ID and Passwords from the options on the left. There's an option called Use Auto Filling for Passwords that you can toggle off. I would personally leave the other options on, but it is of course up to you. One of the most annoying things that happens on a Mac is when you open a file and it opens in the application that you didn't want it to open in. Let's say, for example, that you always want to open JPEG files in Photoshop, but your Mac is opening them in the preview app. The problem is that once an app is associated with a file type, it becomes the default option unless you manually change it. Here's how you would do that. First, find a file that matches the type of file that you want this to apply to. In this example, you can see that I've found a JPEG file. Right click on the file and choose Get Info. Alternatively, you can select the file and press Command and I on your keyboard, which does the same thing. Look for the section called Open With and choose the application that you would like to use to open all files of this type. Once selected, press the Change All button underneath to apply this change to all files with the same extension. So in this case, it would be all JPEG files. By the way, if you prefer to have content like this in a written format, there's a PDF version of this video complete with screenshots, and you can access it along with all other PDFs I've created, plus future ones, for just $5 a month. You can either scan the QR code that you can see on screen, or follow the link in the description of this video to learn more. The Apple Voice Assistant is actually pretty useful on the Mac, although there are some settings that I think everyone should change to make it more useful. For starters, I would recommend not having it listen for the trigger phrase. I just 
don't really see a situation where most people would want this while they're using their Mac. On your watch or your iPhone, sure, but on the Mac, you just press and hold the F5 key and say whatever it is that you want to say, which is much easier and means you're less likely to trigger it by mistake. To disable this, open system settings, choose Siri and Spotlight, and in the listen for option, choose off. I would also recommend that you tap into Siri responses, disable voice feedback, and enable always show Siri captions. With these buttons toggled the way that they are, Siri will respond via text on the screen rather than speaking things out to you. This doesn't affect the way that it works on your other devices, it just means that on your Mac, everything will be done via text rather than voice. This is admittedly a pretty minor annoyance, but the genie effect, which is what it's called when items in your dock minimize or maximize, can take a bit longer than you might like to happen, and it doesn't necessarily look good enough to warrant keeping it switched on. It's really easy to change this to a much simpler and quicker animation. To change this, open system settings, choose desktop and dock, and in the minimize windows using option, change it from genie effect to scale effect. You'll notice now that when you maximize and minimize windows into and out of the dock, the animation is much simpler and much quicker. With the exception of email, I believe that notifications on the Mac are at best pointless and at worst extremely annoying. When you're using your Mac, you're most likely sitting at your desk getting some work done. And the last thing that you want is notifications popping up about the news or from a random app that you forgot you installed. So I would recommend turning off almost every notification and it's really easy to do this. Open system settings and choose notifications. Under the application notification section, scroll down, click on each of the apps listed here. For any app that you don't want to receive notifications for, simply disable them in their individual menu. For example, if I click into Game Center, I can toggle off allow notifications because there is no situation where I want Game Center notifications appearing on my Mac. Do this for every app that you like. I tend to be quite ruthless, only leaving a very small number of notifications on. So there you go, 10 more things that annoy me about working on a Mac and how to fix them, which along with the previous 10 is 20 in total. What do you think? Anything that you think should be included that wasn't in either of these videos? Drop me a comment and let me know. And as ever, if you found this video useful, do please consider leaving me a like and subscribing to my channel for more content like this in the future. See you on the next video.